57th Gene Key, A Gentle Wind. Programming partner, 51st Gene Key, Codon Ring, The Ring of Matter, 18, 46, 48, 57. Physiology, Cranial Ganglia, Belly, Amino Acid, Alanine. The 57th Shadow, Unease, The Fear Band Frequencies. From the point of view of the 57th gene key, absolutely everything in life is acoustic. Even light can be reduced down to a sonic signature. Even so, the sound spectrum that we human beings can access is actually very narrow. The most sensitive mammals can hear sounds well beyond our abilities. We know, for example, that dogs can hear high-pitched sounds and creatures such as whales and elephants can hear sound frequencies far below our own spectrum. Other creatures, such as insects, interpret sound through their entire bodies or legs as pure vibration, which is, of course, exactly what it is. This entire work on the 64 gene keys is a human attempt to paint a picture of the universe of different frequencies that we inhabit and that move through us and around us. At the highest level, as we shall see, we humans are quite simply made of layers of flickering and alternating sound waves. The 64 shadows are all states of consciousness governed by fear. To understand more precisely what we mean when we use the word fear, it may help to reduce it to a certain range of frequencies. If fear-based states fall into a particular wave band, then we can see how easy it might be to adjust our own frequency and raise ourselves above this fear band. This does indeed sound easy. However, there is one thing we have to remember above all else. Humanity collectively vibrates within the fear band frequencies. Therefore, as human beings, we are each under enormous pressure to resonate within these same frequencies. Every human being is like an acoustic tuning fork. If we are placed next to a powerful audio output source, before long we will automatically begin to vibrate at the same wavelength as that output. On planet Earth, this process is ensured through our childhood conditioning. The standard human output source, which is based on fear, is known as the 57th shadow of unease. The ancient symbol for this 57th hexagram in the I Ching is the wind. As a symbol, wind has many dimensions. It is also a symbol for the pervasiveness of spirit because it moves invisibly around the world, touching everyone. When seen from the shadow consciousness, wind can be brutal and even terrifying, uprooting and destroying wherever it goes. When the wind is up, it often conveys a sense of unease. This 57th shadow represents a very deep and ancient fear the fear of what might be coming, of not knowing what is in the wind. Human beings are genetically programmed to fear the future. It is wired into our DNA through this 57th shadow. In our early prehistory, human beings functioned almost entirely through their individual attunement to frequency. If their intuition picked up something dangerous in the wind, their instincts immediately caused their bodies to move accordingly, whether that meant running or hiding or grabbing a weapon. Today, modern man has developed in a different direction. We are now far more polarized in our brains than our bodies, and most people make decisions through reason rather than intuition. This development has changed the 57th shadow of unease Unease no longer functions as an early warning system, restricting fear only to the moment when it is needed for survival. Now, unease is translated by our minds. It is continuous and manifests as anxiety. Furthermore, because of this, it is enhanced through the universal morphogenetic field that connects all human beings as one. 
the mind has become stronger than instinct and seeks to end unease through the creation of external security. And so the rat race of modern culture is born. The more mind-centered humanity becomes, the more security it tries to create for itself, and in turn, the more paranoid it becomes. Security and protection have become a global obsession, even though they are a complete illusion. Life is as uncertain as it ever was, and even for the wealthiest and most protected of human beings, the unease still remains. Humanity today lives within an audiovisual feast of fear. The shadow frequency bears down upon our minds like a huge pressure that we cannot escape. Neither can we turn back the evolutionary clock. The brain is already developed and our mind has such a powerful vibration that there is no way to stop it. We are caught in a global web of fear, so much so that our fear has become collective and we fear for the future of our species. The great contemporary symbol of our fear is money. Apart from those who have accumulated great wealth, the majority of human beings project their fear of the future onto money or the lack thereof. Ironically, those who have a great deal of money have discovered that it doesn't take away the fear. Fear simply relocates to somewhere else in the psyche. All of this fear and anxiety keeps human beings stuck in their heads from where it is very hard to escape. No form of thinking can take away the fear because the fear is there precisely because of the thinking. Without our recently developed neocortex, our early ancestors live very much moment to moment in a reality we can no longer easily imagine. Our minds simply do not allow us to have the experience of living in the absolute present, even though all life, including our body, does live in the present. The mental rat race within each individual's mind has shaped the world we see around us today. In this context, fear is a very creative force, but it prevents us from rising above a certain frequency band as a species. We have come just about as far as we can within these relatively low band frequencies. If we tarry much longer, we will indeed enter the very phase of self-destruction that terrifies us the most. One thing is sure, the mind cannot figure its way out of our current situation, either individually or collectively. However, the good news is that we humans are not afflicted with a disease, but are simply passing through a certain developmental stage of our evolution. The 57th shadow, paired and strengthened by its programming partner, the 51st shadow of agitation, simply does not allow you to feel at ease in our world. This is one of the great shadow pairings that create interference and disease in the human body. All physical disease is rooted in the frequencies of fear. As humanity evolves beyond its current stage, it will eventually move beyond fear, which will result in the end of all disease. Interestingly enough, the 57th shadow conditions your life most powerfully during gestation, when you are a developing fetus in your mother's womb. The vibration of fear actually passes into you at the point of conception. It is then further enhanced by the auric field of your parents, and particularly that of your mother. During these nine months, the essence of your primary developmental cycles from birth to age 21 is hardwired into your DNA. You can understand this in greater depth through studying and contemplating the chemical family known as the Ring of Matter, which contains the 18th, 46th, 48th and 57th gene keys. As we will learn at the gift level, the 57th gene key plays a vital role in the transformation of our species to a higher frequency beyond fear. Through this gene key, we can see that all fear is greatly exacerbated through the anxiety created by the human mind. The 51st and 57th shadows, 
keep us worrying continually about the future and we stay tuned into a narrow frequency band that keeps us in an endless mental loop. Fortunately, there is a way out of this loop. There is a way of moving into a new threshold where fear has far less hold over us. This is the direction in which humanity is now beginning to evolve. Those who listen carefully through their intuition might hear something incredibly new coming in the wind. And yes, one should always trust what one hears on the wind. Repressive nature, hesitant. Hesitancy occurs when an intuition is suppressed by the power of the mind. The body knows what is correct in every cell of its being, but the mind immediately imposes its doubt, anxiety or opinion, thereby rendering the true perception powerless. In this way, all true alignment to the power of the now is lost and clarity, which is pristine and visceral, is repressed in the body. Spontaneous clarity is a state that exists outside the mind and can only be known through the purity of being. The sheer aliveness of a clear and instantaneous knowing is the cornerstone of one's true inner radiance and health. Hesitancy or indecision is the hallmark of the shadow frequency. These are people who tend to become trapped by their own worries, which make them unable to really feel the certainty of spontaneous clarity and commitment. Reactive nature, impetuous. Impetuousness arises as a human reaction to unease or fear. Its sole purpose is to try to escape or bring an end to fear through making a quick decision. Such decisions are not made from the state of clarity described, but are themselves rooted in fear. Because of the nature of impetuous decisions, they can only lead to more misery. Not only do they fail to bring an end to the feeling of uneasiness, but they also manifest additional turmoil in one's outer life. A reactively made decision can only move in the opposite direction of evolution, therefore against the flow of nature. This is not to say that such decisions are necessarily wrong. Life needs to create turmoil as part of its own awakening process. The key to escaping the loop that such decisions inevitably create is to detect one's own fear and experience it fully without reacting first. This witnessing is precisely what dismantles the pattern. The 57th gift, intuition, entering the sin field. Of all the 64 gene keys, few have such a profound connection to individual human health as this 57th gene key. As the foundational aspect of the ring of matter, the 57th gene key governs the cycle of gestation, which in turn lays the pattern for your development throughout childhood. It is during this primary cycle that all your genetic programming is laid down. Your genes build your body at the frequency of the energetic field in which your mother lives. Therefore, every mother plays a crucial role in the biological, emotional and mental structure of the child. The mother is actually a co-creator of the incarnating child and every thought, feeling and impulse running through her being will direct the DNA within the fetus. This obviously puts a huge responsibility on pregnant mothers and has significant implications concerning the transformation of our species through deep honoring of the mother and of the importance of her role during pregnancy. The developing fetus lives in a world of frequency. It literally swims in and imbibes the tones, colors, sounds, emotions, thoughts and intentions of its environment. Even so, the fetus interprets these frequencies through the mother's responses to them. Thus the mother's frequency directly dictates the destiny of the future human being. Each of the three trimesters of pregnancy relate to the three seven-year cycles of the child's development. The first being the physical, 
the second, the emotional, and the third, the mental. In other words, in those first nine months, the first 21 years of your life are completely mapped out. Of course, no one is entirely a victim of the frequency of their mother. At any stage, in any of the developmental cycles, issues rise to the surface in order that they may be embraced, purified, and healed. As your own frequency rises, so you will gradually heal the many layers of your inner being. Even so, it is important to realize how great a head start a child can get from elevated frequencies in the mother during pregnancy. The 57th gift of intuition is basically your body system for interacting harmoniously with the outer world. It is the low frequency prenatal programming that later interferes with the clear operation of your intuition. Although all illnesses were imprinted during the gestation cycle, they can be healed through directly raising the frequency of your DNA. This essentially resets or reboots your entire genetic operating system. As you address the shadow states that such a process naturally brings to light, so you will witness a deepening sensitivity inside you to everything and everyone in the world around you. This is what the 57th gift of intuition is about. It is the natural guidance system of all human beings. If you review the evolution of human awareness up until our present point in time, you may discover a vital insight on which our future evolution will hinge. This insight concerns the role of the inner masculine and inner feminine principles. If we go back in our evolution to primitive man, we can see how deeply developed was our instinctive awareness, our gut feeling or hunch. Our individual survival depended on the innate animal instinct functioning through our bodies, that is, through the five primary senses and the mythical sixth sense, that ability to perceive something coming before our physical senses actually detect it. All human beings alive today have inherited this inner sixth sense if we but knew how to trust in it. In a word, your most powerful inner compass is your intuition. Having developed our intuition, the feminine aspect of our psyche, humanity then went on to develop its masculine side, the mind. Whereas intuition listens and receives, mind explores and conquers. This is why our current epoch is so fascinating. We human beings must now remember our past and reconnect to the power of our intuition. Having done this, we will have to learn to trust our intuition over and above our mental faculties. In this way, we will create a naturally structured internal psyche that mirrors nature. Intuition is how nature talks to and through human beings. It is the auditory canal through which the whole coordinates and communicates with its many parts. If we humans can attune ourselves to this gentle, subtler, internal voice, we will finally begin to feel physically at ease. Furthermore, when our internal hierarchy is naturally formulated in this way, the genius of the mind can finally come into play and follow the dictates of nature herself. The human mind is a truly extraordinary instrument. It is also a very dangerous instrument without the proper internal guidance. We can all see how destructive the mind can be when it is allowed free range without the sense of being connected to the whole. As humanity learns once again to trust its deeper feminine side, as it is beginning to do, the mind will naturally fall into its own rhythm. This revolution is already underway in the individual. Intuition emerges from the whole, so it naturally leads to synthesis, and intuition, backed by the intellect, is capable of extraordinary things. The fact is, that the more you trust in your intuition, the more integrated your life becomes. Your relationships open up and become softer, 
The path of your destiny is made increasingly clear and events move more smoothly, as though the entire universe were supporting you. This is, of course, exactly what is occurring. The process of learning to again trust in your intuition is nothing less than the dismantling of the illusion that you are separate from life. It is a return to the heightened sensitivity you had in your mother's womb. The more you widen this pathway inside yourself, the easier life becomes. Your fear and anxiety will persist in the beginning, but after some time, intuition will become more natural and powerful inside you, as though an invisible force were overriding your old conditioned programming. Furthermore, every time you trust in your intuition or make a decision based on it, you raise the frequency of your whole aura. Your awareness operating system changes gear and your body hums with life. The deeper you go into the new awareness, the more the fear inside is transcended. At higher levels still, you will begin to sense vibrations through your whole body. One of the great revelations you may have through the 57th gift is that fear is not inside you. It is a field that you may live in, pass through or ascend beyond. Evolving your so-called sixth sense is the first stage in this process of vibratory ascension because it allows you to access the universal quantum field or collective unconscious. Once your body becomes lighter and vibrates at higher frequencies, you enter an amazing world known by many names in different traditions. This is the world of the gods and goddesses, or what the theosophists call the causal plane. On this level, the higher mind begins to function, although it has little in common with the mind as we experience it at lower frequencies. The nature of the higher mind is clairaudience, the ability to pick up vibrations through your aura and interpret them through your brain. It is from this causal plane or sin field that all great revelations and spiritual knowledge are downloaded into human beings. Obviously, such revelations occur at various frequency bands within the gift level itself, and the purity of the messages depends on the frequency of the aura that is receiving them. However, the higher you go up the spectrum of frequency, the more integrative and synthesized the transmissions become. In the end, however, regardless of the potential heights that this gift offers human beings, this 57th gift of intuition shows you one of the clearest and simplest paths to move beyond the shadows of your fears. The 57th Siddhi, Clarity the art of softness. At the higher reaches of the 57th gene key, you begin to access the ability to tune your clairaudience beyond the borders of time. This marvelous gift thus allows you to bend time and intuit the future, which in turn changes the way you live your life, allowing you to relax more deeply into your being than ever before. Even at this incredibly high level of consciousness, however, the subtlest traces of shadow frequencies may still remain. Your abilities allow you to sense what is coming, but you are still functioning within the realm of duality. In seeing the future, you acknowledge its existence, and as long as it exists, you don't function fully within the present. Your awareness at these levels has stabilized for the most part in the present, but it still flickers in and out of the present moment. When the ancient sages spoke of the cities or special powers as potential obstacles to the path of liberation, they may well have been referring to the upper reaches of the 57th gene key. Because your frequency becomes very refined at this level, your intuition penetrates everything, including human beings. The sheer sense of power one feels from being able to sense the future or read a person's aura in this way can become an addiction to one operating at this level. 
The subtlest fear becomes the fear of losing all that power by going any further. Of course, when the veil lifts and reveals the 57th Siddhi, you do indeed lose these powers, but not in the sense that one would normally understand. What you lose is the sense of power itself. Since you lose your identification as a separate being, the whole concept of individual power comes to an end. The 57th city is the city of clarity. Since they are programming partners, the 51st and 57th cities always dawn together. Thus, we can only see reality clearly when we awaken fully. The only way to expunge fear totally from your being is to eliminate that being altogether, which is what occurs at the Siddic sphere of consciousness. At the shadow level, we explored the idea that each human being acts as a kind of acoustic tuning fork, picking up the frequencies of the output source beside which it is placed. Similarly, we can see how this works at the gift level as your awareness expands to pick up a wider and more integrated vision of reality. At the civic level, which really brings an end to all levels, the output source and the receiver eliminate each other. You could also say that they come into a harmony so perfect that it is experienced as silence. This state is the eternal now. It captures and conveys the very truth of immortality. There is no fear because there is no tomorrow and therefore there is no death. This is clarity. We learned that the original symbol for this archetype is the wind. In the I Ching, it is usually translated as the gentle wind. This essence of gentleness is one of the greatest secrets to life Consciousness is the gentlest, most subtle phenomenon. This is why the ancient sages so frequently likened it to water or wind, elements of such subtlety and softness that they can penetrate everything. Clarity is about seeing this softness at the heart of all things. In the acoustic field of life, everything rises from softness and returns to the same softness. When you live your life in harmony with this softness, you come into accord with what the ancients called the Tao, the transcendence of the opposites. Furthermore, as you open yourself to this gentleness, this manifestation of clarity, it will reveal itself in your life continually through the sound of the wind furrowing the treetops or a puff of cloud drifting across an ocean sky. The same softness is to be found everywhere, since it is the spirit of life itself. If you allow it, it will transport you immediately into the world of the eternal now. Among humans, the art of gentleness is the greatest of the lost arts. We do not realize that the more softly we lay our hand upon something, the more it opens to us and the more deeply we can access it. Our minds tell us that the opposite must be the case. This 57th city, like all the cities, contains the mystery of the feminine principle, even though it is beyond duality itself. Those who really understand the true meaning of healing know that it is about this essence of softness. This 57th city holds the secrets of miraculous healing through its specific ability to attune to the subtleties of physical DNA. Such gentleness opens the heart and leads to transcendence. Despite what our minds assume, gentleness knows no weakness. It simply operates according to its own laws and timing. Operating beyond weakness and strength, it permeates everything. Clarity is the realization that everything is linked through gentleness. When someone attains enlightenment through this 57th city, it manifests through them in an extraordinary and beautiful way. They become a tuning fork for the divine presence. If you sit in their company, the incredible softness of their aura begins to heighten your frequency very rapidly. In the presence of such a one, 
many people can suddenly experience siddhis, auditory manifestations of higher consciousness. To stay beside such a being for a prolonged period will eventually dissolve your sense of separateness altogether. However, one needs to beware of sitting before an audio output of this kind. You must always approach these people with the right attitude, that of infinite softness. The 57th city tells us precisely how to approach a great master or an awakened being. It tells us how to approach all aspects of life. If you adopt this same softness of spirit throughout your life, then whether you engage with a master or not, clarity will eventually reveal itself and you will realize the true nature of being.